Hello, babies, and welcome to Simply Stacy, where the joy of the Lord is our strength. I tell you, I just feel so good in my spirit today. God is getting ready to birth something mighty awesome in our lives, something in, that we've never seen before. We're going to a place that we've never been before. Just get prepared and push for the birth that God is getting ready to do in your life. So today I want to talk about relationships because this weekend I heard some disturbing stuff and seen some disturbing stuff and I see it and hear it all the time, but it just really touched me this weekend, you know, because this lady really was in desperation and fear and she thought that everything she was saying was right. But all us women, we want husbands and I see so many women in the church that they want to be married. But they're doing all manners of things that is worldly. They're out here messing with other women's husbands. They're laying up with men and just doing all sorts of things that is not godly, but expect God to send them a godly husband. This is not God. But God has a plan for marriage. And when you don't know God's purpose and plan for something, you abuse it. Anytime you don't know the purpose of something, you abuse it. People don't know the purpose for relationships. They don't know the purpose for marriage. So they abuse it. And today, the family unit has been so demised and broke down by the enemy that what we're supposed to learn when we're children and home with our family and seeing it walked out and lived out, we don't get to see that. People say, well, we didn't get no rule book when it comes to our children. Your rule book was your parents, the home that you grew up in. But since our homes have been so distorted and so messed up by the enemy, you don't get to learn valuable tools to use when you go out into society. People are so messed up. They've been abused all kinds of ways. So that goes over into every relationship that they have. Not just marriages and relationships with opposite sex, but in their friendships and their day-to-day -day work jobs and stuff. People are just so messed up when it comes to relationships. So we have to go in this word and learn what God says about relationships. But ladies, I would tell you and gentlemen that God has a desire for us to be married. He did The first thing he did was perform a wedding in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve, husband and wife. So many people say they want to be alone. Well, Paul says, if you're willing to dwell, dwell. But I can tell you, most people ain't willing to dwell. Anytime you want to be sexually active, you're not willing to dwell. People are masturbating, use all kinds of toys. They're out here doing all kinds of sexual acts with people. And this is going on in the church. And this is why so many people don't want to get married. But God wants you to have sex within its context. There's nothing wrong with having sex, but you need to be married. So the bed can be undefiled. Anything else that you do outside of that marriage, your bed is defiled. It's in the word. Read it. Get in your word and read it. And God does want to restore us. You hear that all the time. God want to restore you. Restoration. But he prepares you for restoration. You got to get your body and mind and spirit lined back up with God's plan for your life when it comes to marriage. And the way God joins people together is not the worldly way. Just like Jesus came here was an illustration for us how we're supposed to walk out our lives with God and how we're supposed to do with the Father and what we're supposed to do. That's how we're supposed to do with our lives, our marriages. Us in the body of Christ, we should be a walking, talking illustration for the world to see how marriages and the relationship with Christ is supposed to be manifested and what they're supposed to see. But people don't get to see that. The world don't get to see that. So the church world don't know their identity when it comes to a lot of things. So they mimic the world and it's not supposed to be that way. They supposed to be mimicking us. We supposed to set the tone. So when it comes to marriages, we supposed to set the tone. But since we came out of the world, got saved, didn't get our mind renewed. We continue to do behavior that we did in the world. We have to change our behavior, but the only way you're going to be able to do that is change your mind. Your mindset has to change. You got to get your mind renewed as the world word says. Now, Paul tells us each what our role is in that Bible. The wife, the husband, the children. He got, a, got it broken down in that word. Our roles. And we should walk in love. And we walk in love. We won't be tormentors to each other. We won't hurt each other. But anytime you walk out of love, that's when you hurt people. That's when you devour people. God wants to make you a gift for your husband. He want to make your husband a gift to you. But the only way that we can be a gift is only when we submit to God. We cannot do this thing. We can't change nobody and nobody can change us but God. 
People go out there and say, God's first, then my spouse, then my children. But they lie. They ain't submitted to God. They don't have a relationship with God. They have a relationship with religion. They go to church and do what they do. Quote little scriptures and do what they do. But to have a relationship with him, be submitted to him is a whole nother thing. You will see the world totally different when you submit to God and walk in the spirit. And God wants to give you a husband, ladies. He wants to give you a husband. He has one for you. But it's contingent on you doing what you need to do. Submit to God. Cry out to God. Not to your girlfriends. Not to people in the world. Cry out to God. He hears you cry and he will answer your prayer. It's all in the word. He does that. He knows what you have need of before you have need of it. He don't desire for us to be husbandless. But the world is just so messed up today. So you have to wait on God. But you can't get nothing if you're not there in the spirit realm. You're going to get where your spirit is at. You're going to get where your mind is at. You can't obtain the good without your level of consciousness being in a certain place and your spirit being in a certain place. So submit to God. Male and female, submit to God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. God loves us. He has a plan for our marriages. He has a plan for us. But submit to him and he'll lead and direct your path. He promised to give you the desires of your heart. He loves you. But we can't operate out of our flesh and think we're going to get a God-given gift and then we want to cry and blame God. No, you made these choices. God didn't make this choice. You chose that man. You chose that woman. You didn't submit to God, so you didn't know how to allow God to do it for you. You did it for yourself out of fear, out of desperation. Then you want to get upset thinking like, God, why did you do this to me? God didn't do that to you. You did it to yourself. You chose that mate. Now you in torment. The main attack of the enemy is to set you up in bad relationships from husbands and wives to friendships to business relationships. Every type of relationship the enemy wants to get in at because that's a hindrance to you. It sticks you. It gets you stuck. But you have to realize what God's plan is for relationships. And unless we walk in love, we cannot truly be a gift to another person. We say we want husbands. We say we want wives. Oh, everybody want to have sex at the beginning. Everybody wants to have somebody in their life. But then once you get them, you're complaining. You don't want to have sex. You don't want to spend time with them. So what's the purpose? You're abusing that relationship. And it's not going to fill those voids in you. You need to get God to submit to God to fill those voids in you. To allow you to be whole. So when you get your mate, you will be whole and you'll be a gift. I can't iterate that enough. You want to be a gift. People are so selfish. The love in the world is you scratch my back, I scratch yours. Love don't do that. Love loves rather it gets anything back or not. It loves. Jesus, God loved us even when we weren't giving back to him. We get saved and we still don't give back to him. Because we still walk in a carnality in our flesh. But God loves us. And that's his key thing. He wants relationships. So we want to walk in love so that we can be a gift. We want God to take us through that preparation stage like he did Esther. She got anointed, got the sin of God on her. And she got favor with the king. Allow God to bathe you in his anointing, you to get his aroma. And your mate will smell that scent and that aroma on you. And he'll know that you are the woman of God and he will come and get you. But you need to smell that same scent on him. Do he have the aroma of God? Is he walking in the fruits of the spirit? Can he love you as Christ of the church? No. If he's not submitted to God, he's not. So stop expecting stuff of people when they're not submitted to God. We have these high expectations of people that they cannot give. They're not in the mindset. They're not in the place to do it. They only can give what they have. If it's not in you, you can't give it. Well, babies, I love you. Have a blessed day. God loves you. And smooches, be blessed. You get ready to walk in places you never walked before. <laughs>